Hi, I have a great little studio tip for you today. So have you ever bought canvases really cheap and then you get them home and open them up and they aren't that great. In fact, you don't even know for sure if they're going to take the paint very well. You know, there are good reasons sometimes to buy inexpensive canvases. They're great for practice for one thing and they're useful for other reasons as well. So I do have this tip that can help you make that surface that's very rough and doesn't look like it will accept the paint too well, make that surface much more usable. So let me show you what I mean. The supplies you need will be, of course, a canvas to work on. I'm using gesso, which is made by Liquitex. I have several kinds of brushes here. One of them is just a paint brush for painting. You can get it at a hardware, hardware store, uh, about a one inch brush. And then I have a little bit finer brush too that I've used. And then um, I'm using medium sandpaper and also I'll be needing fine steel wool. I am definitely speeding this up a little bit so you can see it. Uh, without taking too long. The first thing I'm doing with my hardware paintbrush is I am applying gesso to the canvas. I'm trying to get it in even layers and it's a reasonably thick coating and I'm just putting that completely over the whole canvas and trying to smooth it out a little bit as I go. I don't want any glops left behind, so it is important to try to get things as smooth as possible with the paintbrush, but it will leave some brush marks. That's okay, because we're going to sand it next. Once the gesso is thoroughly dry, then it's time to take that medium sandpaper and begin gently sanding the surface that you have just gessoed. You'll want to try to sand away any brush stroke marks that you can see there and go over it several times. You will really notice how much smoother your surface is, but we're going to do another layer of gesso before you're done. I'm ready to add another layer of gesso now. You'll probably notice I'm using a little bit of a softer brush than I was before. So I'm trying to minimize the kind of stroke marks that I'm leaving behind. It's a little bit easier to smooth this out with a softer brush. I'm doing exactly the same thing I did before, trying to make an even layer of new gesso this time, and I'll let it dry before I do any more sanding. The softer brush I'm using is a little bit wider, and it's made out of um, a softer bristle. It's not really a bristle at all. It's more of a hair, which you can find in art stores. Once this is dry, once again, you can sand it. Now, depending on how smooth you want your surface, you may decide that just two layers of gesso is plenty, or you may decide to do a third and sand in between. On your final sanding, you're going to use a fine, fine steel wool and just go over the surface carefully. You don't want to press too hard, but you do want to make sure that you are leaving a very smooth surface behind. Once you're satisfied with the smoothness of your surface, then you are pretty much done and you have now worked out a rough surface and made it into something much smoother and easier to use. Because you're using steel wool, cleanup is really important. You don't want to have any of the little pieces of metal left on your surface. A wet paper towel, well, a damp paper towel will be a good way to pick that up. And you also want to clean your painting surface if you're using the same surface that you plan to paint nearby. You want to make sure there is no metal left behind. That's pretty much it. You have a great new surface to work on.